Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg in Rockville. With me today is one of my very favorite people in politics, my friend, Council Member Sydney Katz. Sydney, thank you so much for taking time to kibitz today. Thank you very much, Cheryl, and for inviting me. And of course, as you know, though, this might be the first formal kibitz we've ever had. We've had a few informal ones for sure. Yeah. A few. So we go back a long time, but we're going to go back even further. Let's start with, um, with Gaithersburg and your childhood. So you grew up just a few decades ago. Um, why don't you talk about your childhood in Gaithersburg, what that was like, and what that was like as a Jewish family in Gaithersburg? Well, first off, thank you for allowing me to reminisce. Um, I tell people I never grew up. I've grown older, you know. <laughs> but but um, my mother's family, the Wolfsons, came to Gaithersburg in 1918. And my grandfather uh, who, uh, was uh, started a store there. And the reason they came to Gaithersburg, my grandparents came to Gaithersburg, is that they were from Lithuania. They came and worked at a factory, in a factory, in Baltimore. I believe it was called Sonneborn's Factory. And um, my grandfather's twin brother, Albert, opened a store in Rockville uh, before World War I. Huh. And um, he, he got drafted. The twin brother was drafted. My grandfather and my grandmother came to Rockville to run his twin brother's store. The twin brother comes back. Um, my grandfather didn't want to be in competition to his own brother, so he opens up a store all the way in Gaithersburg. All the way. Okay. All the way. And I tell people that five miles or whatever it was probably took as long to get to in 1918 from Gaithersburg to Rockville as it does today because of traffic. Wow. But anyhow, um, so my grandfather opened up his store in, in Gaithersburg, and the twin brother, a couple of years later, died. Mm. Uh, and so we, you know, we kept our store, they closed theirs, I guess. I mean, this is way before my time. And my mother and, and uh, uh, stayed in Gaithersburg her whole life. I mean, um, the, the one of the ironies of the whole story is that my uh, grandparents at the Sonneborn's factory, when I married Sally, my wife, her, her father and uncle owned the building across from what was Sonneborn's factory. So uh -huh. it sort of came a full cycle there. Of that. I have uh, I have really warm memories of your mom. She was always so warm and welcoming when I'd come and visit the store. That was yeah, thank you. Yeah. And she really was. She was everybody's everybody's mother. She uh, worked, you know, she worked in the store her whole life. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 12, she actually did the books. Mm -hmm. uh, and my grand my grandfather Wolfson had died when I was four years old. But, and they had moved back to Baltimore in the meantime, not my parents, but my grandparents. Right. But um, my, uh, my mother actually, you know, as I say, worked the store the whole time of her life. And, and uh, my grandfather, when he opened his store, he was actually a, a, um, a suit maker. I mean, he was actually a tailor. My grandmother was a seamstress. And I believe either it was the first dry cleaning plant in Montgomery County or one of the first nice. that he opened. He had a he made suits and had dry cleaning. That was his original his original business. Nice. And then and then they got into other clothing as well. My time uh, growing up was that uh, I, I started. I, I don't know that I ever worked. I ran my mouth in the store my whole life. But but um, I uh, I took over the store. I became an owner of the store yep. when I was 21. Uh, my two older brothers, one became an attorney, one became a lieutenant with the Maryland State Police. Yep. They really were never interested in the store as such. I always liked it. I mean, it was like uh, you know a sociology course every day. You saw people and you totally. had to chat with them and and mind their business, and they minded yours. So talk about the Jewish community growing up, if you will. Well, the Jewish community. Well, it, most of my life, we were the only Jewish family. My uncle uh, was also lived in Gaithersburg with his family. But we were the only Jewish family in Gaithersburg for most of the time. My mother, when my mother was growing up, there were some other families that had moved in and moved out, but we they had moved out by my time. And, and uh, so we... My brothers and I went to a private uh, Hebrew school, private Sunday school mm -hmm. in Washington. We had a private 
teacher it was a few other people in the class right. and so then we were that's how we were we were taught and and uh i was actually bar mitzvah in baltimore because my grandparent my grandmother at that time my grandfather passed away uh we went to their synagogue for us to be for us to be uh, bar mitzvah nice. um and you know that's what we did my mother kept a kosher home her whole my life i mean I don't keep kosher now, but she certainly did to the day she passed away. Hmm. So, you know, it was just an interesting thing. And I always tell people that in many ways it made us, you know, people say, were you discriminated against? We really were not. I mean, we were treated more special than, than anything. Yeah. And I always say that it was a great thing for me because when I was in Gaithersburg High School, I was the best looking Jewish guy at Gaithersburg High. <laughs> <laughs> but but my brothers always pointed out because they're the older than I am that that didn't happen until they graduated that yeah. I was the best looking funny guy. that's but yeah funny. yeah so we're going to get to your political career but um, okay uh uh but I had one more question first that just totally oh uh just talk about the changes over the decades in Gaithersburg in particular well you know I I point out that I've always lived in Gaithersburg my entire life but I've really lived in many different places by living in Gaithersburg my entire life. Yes. Uh, growing up, we, you know, it was a lot of farm, farm friends, not that they had that many farms in the city, uh, but, but you certainly had them in the surrounding area. And, and uh, I was quoted in the Washington Post many years ago as talking about the Montgomery County Fair. And they said, um, you know, what are the changes? And I said, well, my time growing up, the, the, uh, my classmates would take their uh, cattle to the, they would show their cattle at the fair. Yes. And now we take our children to the fair to show them what cattle looks like. Yes. Yeah. Just none, none in this area though. If you drive a little bit further out to the ag reserve, right. you can see some livestock, not as many as you used to, but you can right. see some livestock, but so, it was, it's just changed. I mean, uh, in the early sixties, I believe, um, uh, Gaithersburg, uh, had about as many people living in it as Montgomery Blair High School had as students going to it. It was a wow. little different, but <laughs> not much, just a little different. Wow. And then during my lifetime, you know, Gaithersburg now, I guess, is the third largest or whatever, whatever our pecking order is in Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. But at one time we were the second largest and Rockville was the second largest, but we've seen that many changes. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting about population numbers is that, and I guess for this census, I should double check what I'm saying um, because I, I haven't checked this last census, but Gaithersburg and Rockville individually, individually are larger than about a third of the counties in Maryland. When you stop and think about Kent County and Garrett County, I mean, they're so, you know, they're so much smaller than right. what we consider Montgomery and, and other counties to be. Right, right, right. So let's shift to politics. Uh, you started on the Gaithersburg Planning Commission and then uh, were elected to the um, city council where you served for 20 years before becoming mayor for six years following uh, 16, mayor Ed Ford. 16. 16. Sorry, 16. Yes, I, I have that. Um, uh, following your friend uh, Ed Boer's passing. Uh, why don't you talk about uh, what it was like to be mayor and council member of uh, the greatest city in the world. Well, you know, when you start, we'll have to say how that works too. When I first, because I represent Gaithersburg and Rockville now as the third district for the county council, yeah. Yeah. my good friend and, and a person who and I enjoy teasing and he enjoys teasing me, Ike Leggett, uh -huh. when I was just elected, I mean, like that, you know, next couple of days, and he introduced me in an event and he says, you know, Sydney has always said, you know, the greatest city in the world, Gaithersburg, <laughs> Maryland. I'd like to hear what he has to say now. And I, of course, I thank I very much for that. And, and I said, you know, I have to tell you, what are the odds of the two greatest cities in the world? <laughs> Shady Grove Road. It's just amazing that this has happened. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, 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 it is. I mean, first off, I got involved. It was more civic work than it was political. Uh, Gaithersburg was a much smaller place, and I had just become the past master, but the the president of the of the Masons is called the the Worshipful Master, and I, at the age of of twenty four, became the Worshipful Master of of the Lodge, a Masonic Lodge in Gaithersburg. It's now since moved to Germantown, mm -hmm. and um, so 
once I was a past master, my good friend and, and f- friend of the family's Carol Kearns. And uh-huh. he, he was, uh, he was just a remarkable man. He, his, his son, Bill and I were locker partners. My, my father and Mr. Kearns were good friends. Mr. Kearns was the, the principal uh, of, of Gaithersburg Junior High, I guess is what it was called in those days. He was, a, you know, taught at Gaithersburg High School. Anyhow, he comes in, he was on the city council of Gaithersburg. And he comes in and says, um, Sydney, we need young people. He comes into the store. And he said, Sydney, we need young people to get involved in the, in the city. You ought to start coming up to meetings. And of course, it was a time before cable TV and all of that. Mr. Kearns was someone, if he told you to do something, you didn't, re- didn't say, are you sure? I mean, he, he was such a solid person that you didn't even question anything he suggested to me. So I did. I started going to meetings. I was, you know, 26 years old at that point. And they appointed me to the planning commission. And I was on there with my with my good friend Ed Bohr, who became mayor afterwards as well. And yep. and um and so that's that's and then two years later, Mr. Kearns decided not to run for city council again. So I ran. Yep. And I did that for 20 years. And then Eddie Bohr died in office and I was appointed and then ran for mayor several times. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously the diversity of Gaithersburg, economically, linguistically, ethnically, why don't you speak briefly about that? Well, it's been a dramatic change over the years. At, at one point, and we still are, both Gaithersburg and Rockville are one of the most diverse yep. cities in America. Yep. And, and at one point, I always like to tease Judd Ashman, who's my good friend. And, um, I, the, he's you know, this, the, the mayor of Gaithersburg now. I like to tease him. When I was mayor, we were the most diverse place in, in America, but now I think we're down to number two or number three. I, um, I think Gaithersburg is still in the top 10 of most linguistically oh, diverse uh, yeah. small, smaller cities. Right, right. And and um, and, and at one point, uh, Montgomery County had four of the top 10 places. Uh, you know, like Silver Spring is not a city, but it's a geographic area okay. in, in, uh, in America. Yeah. But it, it, it did change dramatically. And, and for the better, Gaithersburg, I mean, listen, every place you go, there's always, there's always you know, an, an excitement that, that takes place. But, but we've tried our best. We've had so many different groups that work together to, I always say it's a puzzle that, you, that fits together to bring a community. And a community, in many ways, I've often believed is, is a family. And, and, you know, in order to make, and then that does, just like any family, every now and then you have an excitement, you have a discussion, right. but you come back together and you figure out what we did right and what we didn't do yeah. that worked out as well. Yeah. And, and that's what Gaithersburg and, and candidly Rockville, because I, I see them on a constant basis as well, yeah. have, have been able to do, have been able to bring people of a variety of backgrounds and a variety of interests and a variety of economic issues together to try to come up with the very, very best community you can have. And I think we're, we're doing our best on that in Montgomery County in general. So let's now talk about why you decided to run for the county council. You had a hotly contested race with two totally credible opponents and uh, it was a great campaign and you won overwhelmingly. But what made you decide to, uh, to, to give it a go and to shift to the county level? Well, for over the years, especially when I became mayor, um, you know, everybody had always suggested that, that I run for the county council. And I always had the store. And so I, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, you know, I mean, I was just having the store and being mayor, I could do. I was two, three blocks from City Hall and people wouldn't, they were very annoyed that steam coming out of their ears. They would come into the store right then. And <laughs> they understood that I had two lives. I had a business and I had a, and I was trying to help out with the city. Right. And they were always very, very um, good about it. They would say, Sydney, as soon as you finish with your customer, I need to talk to you. Right. Anyhow, and so that was all fine. And then I was spending less time in the store uh, my brothers and I still own the building there, but but I was spending less time in the store than I should have. Mm-hmm. And I knew that a small business, um, if you don't, if you're not working the small business, then sometimes that's not going to work out for you. So I, I sat down with my wife, Sally, who I'm very, very fortunate to be married to. Yes, and we have two daughters. I think I, think I should mention them in this uh, in this discussion as well. Absolutely. I have two daughters and a very fine son-in-law. But anyhow, I sat down with Sally and I said, would you care if I closed the store, if I retired? 
And she said, I really would not care. She would not. And so I think that's what I was going to do. I was going to close the store. I was going to stay as mayor, you know, put my feet up a little bit and enjoy life. Huh. And then um, the Washington Post did an article on me with my arms crossed with a picture and all that and said, you know, mayor closes his 95 year old business. Right. And I started getting calls from, I mean, it was unbelievable, really. Yeah. People said, well, why don't you, why don't you run for County Council? Phil Andrews, who had the seat before yep. me, yep. Phil uh, was going to, was at that point running for County Executive. And, um, and so why don't you run for that seat? And you don't have to retire. You don't have to resign right. unless you, unless you win. Yep. So, you know, why not? You know, I've, I, this is the time. If I was ever going to do it, I was going to do it then. Right. And that's how I, that's how I got here. So what was the biggest thing you hoped to do in the, at the county level that you couldn't do in the city? Well, you know, you, you, first off, let me just say, I was at the county council as mayor of Gaithersburg many, many times. I always tell people I had a great seat in the chamber. I mean, I was, you know, I was, yeah. I, I, you know, had all my friends were on the county council. I mean, I, you know, it was, it was all hail fellow well met whenever, right. I, yeah. whenever I came down. And I really thought that it was just going to be an extension of what I was doing in Gaithersburg. Well, <laughs> Not yeah, so much. The, the first, the first little hint that I had that it wasn't going to be the exact same is that my uh, chief of staff, Lisa Mandel Trump, who was Phil Andrews' chief of staff, and she's yeah, the yeah. longest serving chief of staff in, in Montgomery County. Yeah. She um, she said, okay, you need, you know, for your staff, for your own personal office. I never had personal staff as mayor yet. Right. You know, the, the, the council had a group uh, of people that work, but nothing personally for yourself. And so she said, you know, for your own personal staff, you need you know, and she started up and, and said, and you need a scheduler. I said, whoa, I don't need a scheduler. I mean, I, I schedule myself. I, yeah. uh, you know, I can, I can fill in a, a calendar. And she says, well, you're either going to have a, you're either going to do your own scheduling or do the work of what you need on that, you know, for those, uh, those, uh, the, every, those days, because you're not going to have time to do both. Right. Well, what's she talking about? Well, thank goodness we have a scheduler. And yes. Thank goodness I have Lisa and, and everyone else who's working for the office. It's yep. it's busy. It's I mean, of course, COVID has changed the world dramatically. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, but 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 prior to COVID, you always had people coming in and going out of the office, and uh, so you know, it's just just a change change situation from what it is. Totally. In many ways, because my district, though it goes right now, includes Leisure World and other places in Washington Grove. Um, that that uh, uh, in many in many ways you you do actually uh, constituent work now for the next county council the new district really pretty much is ninety percent or more uh, strictly Rockville and Gaithersburg as a district and and obviously my background in municipalities is 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 Helps pretty pretty dramatic so uh, anyhow I, I it, it's a changed world from that as well yes. So since you brought it up, let's uh, let's mention redistricting. The Montgomery County Council did it differently this year, uh, this decade, and very differently from the state or the federal. So why don't you just chat briefly about that and uh, and how you think it went? Well, first off, they, I think it went as good as it could possibly go. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you had everybody that called and thanked you for, yeah, right. for what happened with it. But it's a very difficult thing. And beyond just the redistricting part of it, the census part, you also had two, two districts added, uh, the public uh, by referendum added two districts. So, but I think it, it went well. Uh, we had a commission that worked on it, bipartisan. And, uh, and, and I think they did a very good job. I mean, they really did. They, they met many times. They met with the public many times. Uh, at the very end, the county council, very, with a very few tweaks, uh, did adopt what the what the commission said. So I think you know it. It. it am, am I happy that I lost some areas? I'm not. 
but you knew it had to happen because yeah. the because it was going to be smaller. Each right. district was going to be smaller. Well, smaller because going from nine to 11 council members, but also the growth in Gaithersburg and Rockville in my district, my legislative district, which has been all of Gaithersburg and all of Rockville and virtually nothing else, um, was one of the most overpopulated districts in the state because both are uh, great cities that people want to live in. Absolutely. And in my case, District 3 for the County Council is going to go from about 220,000 people to about 160,000, uh, close mm -hmm. to 160. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you knew that there was going to be friends that you that you're losing and who are representing. Yeah. And as I've pointed out to every one of the areas that even though, uh, unfortunately, they will not be able to vote for me, right. I am right. still going to be someone that I'm not going to change my, my phone number. They should call me if, right. to, so that we can be of assistance. Nice, nice. Well, let's... Uh... There are so many things I want to talk to you about. Okay, let's talk about that. I'm trying to do the transition thing. So you and I have collaborated on a lot of things and I adore and appreciate um, the opportunity to work with you to get things done for our, con our, our mutual constituents. Uh, why don't you talk about how you work with the federal and state governments as well as with municipal governments? Well, first of all, and I want to publicly thank you for all of your assistance over the years. You know, everybody believes this gets done by a magic wand. And it would be wonderful if either one of us had that, right. that magic <laughs> wand, but it just doesn't, it's just never appeared for, for any of us. It, you know, you get by, you know, that song, you get by with a little help from your friends. And that's what we've been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've been able to do that from the very beginning. I mean, Obviously, the, the federal government, uh, though it's a larger bureaucracy, when someone has an issue and they call, we certainly have people in, in, in our, uh, and we have very fine representatives yes, we do. for, for all, all of the federal government that, we, that we're dealing with. So, you know, we deal with those, the state and, and the municipalities as well. I mean, I'm, I'm on the phone with um, Mayor uh, Newton many times. i on the phone with Mayor Ashman Rockwell. many times. And, 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 and you know, uh, uh, so it's, it's the discussions that you have and you want them to be able to talk to you formally and informally right. to, to get there. And of course, as, as I have said in the very beginning, we've had some uh, many informal uh, uh, right. uh, pivotings. Yeah. And, and so that's that's what it takes. I'm on, I'm on the phone with you and your colleagues in the state many times as well. And, and many times when someone has an issue, they really don't care who solves it. Right. They don't care whether it's the feds, whether it's us, whether it's you. They just want the thing solved. Absolutely. That's, that's what it takes. Well, Sidney Katz is on speed dial on my phone, as he knows. And vice versa, <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> um, tell a brief story about when... Um, you're having a small business perspective uh, amplified and uh, informed the conversation, the debate on the county council. Well, you know, we're all, we all bring our own um, experiences. Yes. And, and I, growing up in a, in a business, and of course my business was a little different than everybody else's. I was only open six days a week, not seven. Um, and and uh, we owned our own building, so I didn't have to worry about the the rent and all of that sort of thing. Yes. But you, but you realize early on that that not every day do you make a profit in a small business and that there's days that you really figure out why, how am I going to, you know, how am I going to pay for whatever? I mean, I, I never had to worry too much with that, but there was days that you did. Sure. And, and that brings, that brings it home. I mean, you, you realize that I was talking to someone just the other day on another topic and they said, you know, Montgomery County is so wealthy. And I said, there are parts of Montgomery County that are so wealthy. There are parts of Montgomery County that are far from wealthy. And we have to think about both parts yes. and to think that everybody can just afford everything. And, and that was one of the valuable lessons that I had in, in the store. I was taught early on that not every dime comes in your, that comes into your register is profit. Mm. And you have, you have a lot of expenses that you have to take care of first. Right. And, and in order to do that, you have to be very careful and on how you spend your money and other people's monies. And especially in government, you're spending somebody else's money. So it's, it's, it really is, has become valuable lessons. Yeah. My grandmother, Wolfson, who used to own the store and, and, and she, she was someone who never learned to read or write English. She, uh, but I always tell people 
that she certainly learned how to count well. She was okay. a real businesswoman. She really was. <laughs> and she used to always say, it's not what you, it's not what you make, it's what you save. Hmm. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of, she was, she at times could be a real character, not to say that she wasn't, but she really was, gave me many valuable lessons. And I'm so very fortunate that I was nice. able to know her. Nice. So back to the county council, um, you're chair of the public safety commission and yep. uh, you may not know this about me, but uh, um, I do some work on 911. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I had no, you've kept it quiet. I had no idea. <laughs> so uh, for someone watching who may not be aware, um, I always share the fact that three people have died in my district when 911 has failed, including my friend Carl Henn, who was struck by lightning and died when 911 was overloaded in a freak thunderstorm. So I chair a statewide commission and we've done some great work. So talk about 911 in Montgomery County and public safety in general, if you would. Well, first of all, I'm the chair of the public safety committee. It's not a commission yes. from us. Right. Yes, if I and, say and I'm also on the on the government operations committee. Um, the the 911 and and thank you for all of your hard work. You know the the entree to any any um, concern is someone picking up the phone and dialing 911 in order to to get fire and rescue or, or the fire, police officer, or whoever, yeah. whoever, whatever the excitement needs. Yeah. And, and um, so it's, it's really, uh, we've, we've had difficulty getting people to, to be uh, the take the call takers on, on nine, uh, the dispatchers for 911. Um, but we're, we are very fortunate that we have systems in place where people can, can get, can get there, can get through to people. And that's not to say that every now and then you don't have somebody that says that they didn't answer quick enough and those types of things. But in general, I'd say the 90 percent in general, we, we do a very good job. And we're very fortunate to have not only someone dispatched, but the people that get there once they're dispatched can save your life. Yes, no question. So we've done a lot of work at the state level. We've um, for our 911 specialists, uh, renaming them. Uh, offering opportunities for tax credits, uh, better access to health care. And uh, this year I'm sponsoring workers' compensation, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole or this will be a three-hour kibitz. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about COVID. Um, it has been an enormous challenge for the, for the county, for the state, and obviously for the world. Um, but why don't you talk about your experience and uh, what you think the county did well and where you think it fell short? Well, first of all, I was council president when the COVID crisis hit. Yep. Um, my colleagues were very, very kind and worked with me. I mean, I we always say that we were building the plane as we were flying it. Mm -hmm. I, I now, I, I had heard of Zoom. I, right. I, I had never lived on Zoom the way I do today. And, and thank goodness we had it because otherwise we'd have been out of business. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of things that, in the beginning that we certainly are doing better now because we now know, you know, we can set up, we've set up how to, how to handle these things. But if we didn't have the federal government for some, for the, 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 the uh, funding that they sent, if we didn't have uh, so many, so many people who worked with us, we'd have been in huge trouble. And of course, before the vaccine, I mean, now we have problems with the vaccine and, and the two, the two shots and the boosters. Right. But, but before that, we had so many people that, that died. I had good friends that died. So it's just been, it's just been so dramatic. I, what did we do well? I think in the beginning, when we got the federal money, we didn't do as well getting the money out mm -hmm. because we didn't have people in place in, in order to, to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, now we do. Part of the problem with the federal money was that they said, look, you can only use, I think, up to 10% on administrative costs, which makes sense. You want the money to go to the people Absolutely. that you want to go to. But if you don't spend it on administrative costs, you can't get the money. To, so, you know, there's all those issues. Right. Yep. No, challenge. Um, what are you proudest of? What's your, uh, what's your proudest accomplishment on the county council to date? Wow. That's always a tough one. I think, Candle, if you had to choose... Um, that the fact that I was involved in, in bringing mental health courts to uh, both both uh, circuit and and, uh, and district mental health courts to the county, um, 
you, you know, I think the best thing that you can ever do in government is help people. Yeah. And, and I really, I go to their graduations. I've seen the people that they've helped and, and I'm very proud of that. That's great. Yes, I've been to, I guess I've been to two of them. They were very moving, inspiring. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And and then of course I go to the drug courts as well. And yeah. and and those are very moving. And you figure, how in the world did somebody get themselves in that situation? Yeah. But they did. Yeah. And thank goodness we have some very fine judges that have helped them get out of that situation. Yeah. In some cases the person didn't necessarily want to get out right. the way that they got out, but they yeah. the judges have helped them get their, their better life. Let's give a shout out to Nelson Roop who really um, had that vision, yeah. that passion and, and really invested. Um, let's talk, we'll, we'll start to, to wrap up and go to the fast five, but uh, you've referenced your wonderful wife, Sally, a couple of times. So why don't you talk about um, the importance of having a supportive spouse in politics and how she helps you be effective? Well, you know, I, I've had a blessed life and, and Sally has certainly been uh, a huge part of that blessing. I mean, I have a family that 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 I was born into that that I loved and then have loved me. And I didn't I didn't always appreciate that until I got in government. I always thought everybody had that situation, and that's not that's something that you realize is not true. But okay. Sally is just a wonderful partner. She uh, she's been by my side. She and I have 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 been married uh, since uh, 1978, and she's wow. been by my 40. 43 years, I guess, at this point, she's been by my side uh, the entire time. Uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the, if, and my, and my daughters as well, and, and my son-in-law now, but, but my daughters as well, if, if a, so a person is elected, but the, the whole family is involved because yeah. somebody will see Sally in the grocery store and say, can you tell Sydney, you know, type of thing. Right. And, and of course, Sally being working in the, in the school system, uh, was a big help because she brought brought that experience to the to the breakfast table as well. Yep. No, that's great. Well, Sally's awesome. Um, 2022 election year. Why don't you give us a quick snippet of how you see the landscape? Uh, and if you want to share your uh, your plans in District Three. Yeah. Well, I'm more than happy to share my plans in District Three. I am running for re-election, it would be win, loser, win, loser, draw. It's my last election. I'm, yeah. I'm term limited after that, but I do plan on, on running uh, a, a, again. I have to, I'll be filing in, in, in uh, January. Um, and then, um, you know, I, it's gonna be an interesting year in so many ways. Uh, the county exec race is heating up pretty, pretty dramatically as we, as we speak. Yep. Uh, the the uh, the county council races now that we know the districts will start to start to get the puzzle fitting together and yes. and of course in your case I mean I know that that you're running for re-election and and uh, not any everyone in your in uh, who are delegates are running for re-election so that'll be a big change I know that there's a good possibility that district 17 I might not be in district 17 I but my uh you know who knows uh I, where that'll end up and of course we, I don't want to let you go <laughs> what'd you say I I want to didn't want to let you go I'm pretty sure well, and, and I don't want to go though I'm you know I understand how these things work but but the 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 fact that it's so close to to that we've had to wait to the last minute to find out what's going on yeah. has been no pleasure either. No. So, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll, as I tell people, we've muddled before, we'll muddle again through yeah. this. All the ways that Donald Trump messed things up, redistricting by having them slow walk the census numbers, which meant a delay in the start of redistricting, which meant that somebody who wanted to run against either one of us didn't even know where they lived and what the district was and couldn't really start campaigning. And it's just democracy, anyway, is recovering, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah um, democracy is recovering. Yes. <laughs> is there anything that we haven't talked about, Sydney, that you want to mention now before we go to the Fast Five? No, I, 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 I appreciate all of this. And first of all, I appreciate reminiscing, as I say, you know, whenever you can, can think about things that you've lived through. But, but I, 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 uh, I, I think we've hit on probably more things than, than, uh, than I would have thought of, that's for sure. 
Well, I've got pages of notes. So, all right. So, council member and my friend, Sydney Katz, uh, your fast five, five quick questions to let people get to know you better personally uh, with brief answers. So, question number one What is your favorite lesser known restaurant in, in your district, in District Three? Well, I don't know if it's lesser known, but, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, Sin and Grin, which the, the people that owned Vasilla's originally oh, yes. uh -huh. was very good. Uh, you know, I, I, we, we enjoy that restaurant. We enjoy many, but, but I, I was talking about that this, this, this morning to sit with Sally. When's the, when's the next time that, and right now we're doing carry out. We're not doing necessarily going to the restaurants. Did but, you say yeah. Sin and Grin? Sin and Grin. It's the old Vasilla's, the original <laughs> yeah, Vasilla's. You know, yeah. 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 I, I love the name. Uh, yeah. Question two, what is your favorite movie of all time? My daughters are always very annoyed with me when I answer this, but I always tell them Mighty Ducks. I've always like, it's, it's, it's a happy ending, you, you, you know, anyhow, I, I, go, I go through Mighty Ducks. Okay, know. all right. Um, what is a new hobby or practice that you took up during COVID? Well, really, I uh, haven't taken up any hobbies. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of time. Though I do enjoy doing read, uh, you know, reading fiction. And so, uh, you know, not that I have a whole lot of time to read, to right. read, but, but uh, in the evenings, you know, right before I fall asleep or whatever, I'll, I'll enjoy that. Good. Um, who is a shiro or hero of yours? Well, my parents were. Uh, they they really were. They were great mentors for me. Um, this Mr. Carol Kearns, who I talked about earlier, is certainly one. Yes. Um, but I've I you know I've had I've had so many people that have been so very very helpful to me. My brothers, my brothers have been very helpful. There there I, I I like to remind people that one of my great strengths is that that my the people that will tell you when you're stupid are a big help to you. I mean, I always, I always like to say when I became mayor, it's true, and, and you're a big help. I would say. <laughs> but, but when I became mayor, all of my jokes became so much funnier because That's people right. wanted to be your friend. Right. But the people that would pull you aside and say, you realize that what you did didn't make a bit of sense. Right. That was a huge help, too. I, I like it's OK to tell me I did OK, right. but it's also OK to tell me when I didn't. And that that's is, that's a big help. That is so important. I exactly what you just said. And, you know, don't, don't embarrass us, but help us do our jobs better by pulling us aside and say, you know what, I disagree with you on that, or I don't, yeah, or that kind of sucked. I think you ought to do it differently or better or something. So yes, totally. Yeah, big help. And the last question, Sydney, the question that I ask everybody, what is your secret hidden superpower? What is a skill or talent, something you're really good at that most folks can't do? Well, I don't know that I have any that are so wonderful, but, and I can't do it with the lights the way they are, but I actually can wiggle my eyes and ears at the same time. Okay. Yeah, the so, light prevents you from doing it. Yeah, that? because I, I don't know if you can pick it up. Can you see Yes, it? actually I can. I can yeah. see one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I, I've been able to do that <laughs> my whole life. And of course I've been able to entertain uh, especially youngsters with it, sure. but uh, yeah, that's that's been a real talent of mine. Okay, I think that's a good stupid parlor trick, but but do you have something else that you want to brag about here? Well, I, that's the, the the first thing that pops in my mind. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm just you know somebody that in, enjoys chatting with people and 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 uh, and being a friend to many and with, of a of many many backgrounds. I'm. I'm very fortunate in that. Yes. Well, Council Member Sydney Katz, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being a great friend and partner. Uh, it's been such an honor to have been able to work with you now for, God, coming up for on uh, 30 years. Is that possible? No, That's yeah. crazy. And you're only 28. So That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's been such a pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you for taking time to Kibitz, and I look forward to lots more successes uh, together in 2022. And vice versa. And thank you for being a good friend along the way too. We we always appreciate having 
having those discussions and seeing your name appear on the phone knows I know either something's good's going to happen or somebody's going to tell me something's not so good that's happened. So we appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay well. See you soon. Good thing. Thank you.